I start the recording now. Hope that's fine with you. And um, for those of uh, us who cannot participate right now, good to see you. Um, hope you are fine. How uh, how are you? You want to write in the chat or unmute yourself? Oh, th thumbs up <laughs> and a smiling face. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Vesna and Mirna, I hope you're fine too. Yes, I got a thumbs up uh, with the emoji. Um, yeah, um, today a, a workshop about Creative Commons licenses. Uh, so um, I, from what I sense in the group and maybe from everyone here today, uh, it's very our pre-knowledge <laughs> Uh, about Creative Commons license is very different. So I would be very interested to know how much do you know? Have you ever, had you ever heard about it before, ONL? Uh, I know that that license exists because of um, the articles. Open access license, open, open access papers. But I don't know how it works. No. Everything about it. <laughs> Excellent. Then, th then this is the session. This is the this. I planned the session a little bit um, for you, Alexandra, and for others like you. Um, but I heard from from Vesna you actually using it. Um, was this yes, correct? I've used it many times, but uh, I have to always remind myself uh, what type of license uh, do I need to. Uh, use and uh, so it's always a little bit of uh, let's say not challenging but i have to revise and uh, see so this webinar will be useful to yeah. revise excellent hopefully um we we let's uh, that's my ambition at least for today for the next hour or so maybe um uh, explain a little bit in 20 minutes what we are talking about but um, do this interactive with you guys um um and uh, hopefully that you have a better understanding where to find creative commons license materials why we talk about this in the first place and um some practical tips when you're writing your individual reflections for instance how you can spice them up with a nice picture which you are uh, which you're allowed to use that's that's my idea. Let's see how we go. So um, to start, and another question. Um, I start uh, sharing my screen. Um, <clears throat> who of you had a chance to watch um, this five-minute video about Creative Commons licenses? If you wanna, no, no problem. It's not. Uh, I'm not the teacher checking on you. I'm just got a pre idea. <laughs> I just you know. watched it. I've just watched it. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for uh, sharing and um, and yeah. some have seen it. Um, I assume some of you have not or have all seen it. No. Okay, then I'll do a quick recap what we're talking about. And um, so thank you for being so honest. Um, that's all good and was part of the plan. Um, so if um, here's the, and I, I ask you a lot of questions, okay? Um, so uh, do you know how you get copyright of something? What you have to do? To register our work, I think it's it's just enough to publish it. Like copyright comes naturally with when you produce something and publish, you are the author. Exactly, you're not only the author, you're also the copyright holder. That can depends a little bit from your institution to institution and your organizational context. If you do it at work or not, that can be different. In Sweden, it is we teachers have the copyright for our stuff. Um, but as a private person, if you create a picture and if you publish it or not, if you write something, an essay or compose music, um, then you are the copyright holder of your work. But you, you, you yeah? have to register your work. Otherwise... No, I don't. 
I don't think you have to register it. Like if you publish it on paper or in a digital form, you automatically make it available to the rest of the world. And if you don't say anything or don't do anything specific, you are the author. I guess, I hope I'm right. Yes, I'm you only, are. I, I'm only thinking because there's this distinction between like expressing something, expression and an idea. If, you, if there is an idea... Idea is not like a copyright thing, but when you present your idea in a given form, in a poem, as a photograph, uh, as an essay, then you already presented your idea in a given form, published it like on a paper or digitally, and you are the author. Exactly. And you're not only the author, you're the copyright holder in legal terms, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to write a C in a logo on the bottom of your homepage, or you don't have to register it in a copyright and um and i have to say a little disclaimer i'm not a lawyer so i cannot give legal advice but this is the common understanding and in international copyright law you don't have to register it for you uh, being the copyright owner okay you don't even have to publish it but if you publish something or if someone else publishes something on the internet for instance then they are the copyright owner Oh, I, I, Jörg, I, um, yeah. I think there are some situations that we have to be careful because there are websites and, and like hap happens in s journals, like sometimes when we publish, then they become the copyright owners because like, for example, if I create a model and I want to use it on another publication, I have to ask permission to use that because it has <laughs> become has become sort of like property of the journal where you, it was published. Exactly. So, Very yeah. good point. Exactly. Uh, and um, it helps us for understanding here. We have a lot of researchers among us. But the problem is, Joe, what we do as researchers, what we have not thought about all the time, all the years, what we do is we sign off our yeah. copyright to publishers, yeah. right? In and the publication process, a lot of the times, <laughs> yes, we have done it for years, and hopefully we stop doing this, because we, as researchers, are often not interested in copyright questions, right? We want we are interested in knowledge, disseminating our findings, our knowledge. But what we had and what we didn't think about and didn't read in the fine print, what we are doing in the publication process, we give away for free our copyright to publishers who then come back to me as the uh, director of the library and say, look, I have all this research. Do you want to have access to it? Yes, then show me the money because I'm the copyright holder of all your uh, co uh, researchers, colleagues' work because they were so kind enough to hand it over for me for free for the status of getting a publication in our fine journal. This is the system we're living in research-wise. This is connected to copyright. This is connected to Creative Commons licenses because the remedy for it is that we say, no, 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 no. Uh, we don't give you the copyright um, um, completely and exclusively. We publish our work with the Creative Commons licenses for others to reuse because we as researchers are the copyright holders for our articles. And we don't have to give them away to publishers. And this is a big systemic thing which we're trying to get out of now as a research uh, society and uh, community. Uh, and we're part of it. And this is exactly what we're going to talk about in the next hours. But this is the underlying principle for us to understand. When we create something, a picture, a blog, a text, any word, a PowerPoint presentation, anything which comes to the level of that is a creative work, then we're the copyright owners. And then, so we established that, right? So if you create something, you are the copyright owners. Yeah. And I guess, I guess, yeah, the, the important thing is to say we are the authors, we are always the authors, and we will be the authors till we die, I guess, and maybe even 70 years later as well, <laughs> or maybe even later we will be the authors anyway. And then we are the owners of copyright. These are two different things, like being the author and being the owner of copyright. And unless we don't sell or give our copyright, we have both of them, right? Exactly. Um, exactly. We talk about the um, 
ideal uh, rights and the copyright, uh, the economic rights uh, for our works. We are always the authors and should always be credited for our work, uh, independent if we're still uh, the exclusive copyright owners or not. Um, but um, so, OK, turning around um, and hands up, who of you have copied and pasted the pictures from the Internet and used it for their PowerPoint presentations? And what have we done in this uh, case, most likely? I, <laughs> I report all them. Yes, I, yes, I, you I, cite I, them. That's great. Yeah. Uh, you told that's very nice. Um, if you said like, oh, I picked, I copied this picture yeah. from this source. But what yes. you still done in this most likely is that you breach copyright law, right? This was an in, illegal act. But, and, but, and, 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 and just let us sink this in a little bit because we established us someone else had this copyright. We copied their work and used it. And most likely, I would say, uh, you didn't ask for permission, right? Uh, yeah, but just, some, sometimes yeah. we, we, we feel it's okay for educational purposes, like a diagram or a yes. theory presented in a visual form. We find it in a textbook and then we share it with our students. And we even say who, uh, who developed this theory or this diagram. Maybe we cite the book there. But yes. yeah, you are right. Sometimes we don't even ask if we can like share it or not. We found yes. it in, edu in educational material and we believe we are entitled to share it further. Exactly. Um, there are exceptions and you, we could ask, uh, discuss if it's morally okay to do this. And there's probably also, um, depending on where you're, uh, in which country you are um, working, uh, some legal rights that you have in, in the United States, they have something like fair use in educational context. Uh, you might be fine. Um, but uh, if we can if we can just establish and remind us that if we just copy and paste stuff from the internet, as we probably do, we are very likely breaching copyright laws. Yeah. Maybe um, we're not, and maybe we are find enough to cite, and maybe there's no consequences whatever because the copyright owners don't care or don't follow up and don't sue us. But that's just like uh, stating the facts what we're doing. Okay, and 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 now I'm moving on to now I would like to, to show you a way where you can be sure that you're not breaching copyright law. Right. And and where we can be safe and where we can build on stuff on each other's work to build uh, openly available textbooks, for instance, where we which we can build and work upon. Right. And this is, yeah, and there's other remedies also. There are royalty-free pictures, for instance. And great, if you know about these and sources, just quickly, I show you a, a few resources just as a practical workshop also for you, for your reflection posts. Like one of them I use, for instance, is unsplash.com. You find a lot of uh, royalty-free pictures where people have set in beforehand if i use my um um if i upload my work here it's understood that i um and don't um, that others can reuse it without asking here you see for instance you can um, filter after licenses be aware also on uh, unsplash that here up top is often um commercial pictures which lead you to royalty uh, non-free pictures and then you have something lately unsplash has introduced something like unsplash plus for those pictures you have to pay uh, for in order to use but a lot of other pictures you could then just uh, here download um, and uh, then you get here this little nice um, uh, line here if you want to credit the author which i think you should always do and it's good practice um to credit the author of the picture or uh, creator and um, brooke kegel in this place and where you found it then you can just simply copy it and you can download the picture right and here you find a lot of uh, high quality pictures Exactly. A good um, uh, Pixabay um, is what I usually uh, also show. Um, it's the same here. And um, this is... 
does Pixabay work like uh, Unsplash the same way? Like the first yeah. line is royalty, like you have to pay, and the rest below is like all of them are available uh, as uh, based on Creative Commons. Um, here, here you see, yes, yeah, sponsored images, iStock, same company. So same here, and here you see the royalty-free images, right? So um, I'll just pop in the link. Oh yeah, I did already. Another one is Pexels. There's um, um, there's a few of these pages, right? And there you find um, there you find a million or two high quality pictures which you can reuse without problem. Okay, so th these are good to know. And this has nothing to do with Creative Commons licensing, um, but this has to do with copyright and um, um, royalty free pictures where people who uploaded their picture um, basically gave away their copyright. Okay, like we used to do with our research, just that they don't make much money out of this here and we can get access to it for free. This is this is great. This is if you only had five minutes here or sixteen minutes and need to go and see this is good enough for me. Then you can face out now. Now I would like to show you if you have twenty or no, fifteen more minutes, um, then I can show you how you can find seven hundred million creative works. But for this to um, uh, understand, there you have to get a little bit un better understanding of um, Creative Commons licenses. Right. So Openverse is a um, meta search engine for Creative Commons licensed um, works. It's pictures, but it's also music and all kind of other stuff. All right. And a great resource. Openverse is actually um, run by WordPress by um, and, and integrated um, <clears throat> often in in the uh, in in the. Um, in the media libraries of WordPress, it's not on open network learning, but if you go to wordpress.com, um, you can start a blog and integrate easily pictures from Openverse. But I show you how you can done it, do it also on open network learning with your um, uh, reflection space. So here, um, what I usually show in my workshops is like um, on this topic is like, okay, I sometimes want to do a presentation about Karlstad, right? This little city in Sweden. Um, even on Pexel, no, on Pexels, you don't find anything. But if I go to Pixabay, uh, for instance, I know I find some pictures. Um, and this is one of the reasons why this can be useful. And you can try with your city where you're from. You will find on Pixabay probably some pictures. And Karlstad, um, oh, no, I said Karlsbad. That is uh, another city. And <laughs> why is it? I don't want a card spot. I want a card start. <laughs> it's not even search for cards that instead. Here's the link. See, there you get 13 pictures here. They are nice enough. Um, but it's not the stuff I want to show, maybe. Right. So if I go to Openverse and do the same search, I find a few thousand pictures, 8,732 uh, pictures. Right, a lot more to choose from because here I find Creative Commons license pictures, and here I have a nice filtering, um, also to um to filter only the works I want to have, and I'll walk you now through the differences. Um, what is what here? Because you've seen, have you all of you seen those logos here from open access articles, maybe? Yeah, this is an excellent resource. I think so. Open verse, um, and it gives you, and it's also a good explanation. Helps explaining Creative Commons licenses. So, what Creative Commons licenses are about is that instead of it's turning around the process of uh, asking and giving permissions, right? Standard is you create a picture, you upload this. What do we need to do if we want to reuse it? We need to ask the copyright holder, right? Are we allowed to reuse your picture in my blog? This is pretty annoying if you have stuff you want to share, like a research article, like um, 
an open textbook maybe or PowerPoint presentation so you think could be useful or for other researchers or teachers, right? Then you want to give permissions to others beforehand when you publish it. And that's where Creative Commons licenses come in. It turns around the asking and giving permissions progress because when you publish something, for instance, on YouTube or on uh, other places where you can upload pictures, um, then um, you often have the opportunity to say, like, I published this at, under a Creative Commons licenses license. And you can indicate which of these licenses, and we go through the difference in a second, and then they are machine readable and searchable. Right? This is why we can filter them so quickly and re, uh, find Creative Commons license works. So with all those pictures here, people are basically saying, I give you permission to reuse. You don't have to contact me and ask me. It's okay. And if you understand what these mean, here are these symbols, and you can simply click on these, for instance, to get the definition, and you get even a link to the original um, page where this text is coming from, for instance, CC BY here. You see, all you need to do is create the uh, credit the creator. And if you go to this link here, read more, then you're on the creativecommons.org homepage, which is behind those licenses, right? Those have been in place for 20 years now, and they have been tested in court. There's a there's a text which are able, which we humans, normal humans can read and understand because it's very easily here explained. You are free to, under this license, share and adapt uh, the picture in this case under the following terms. And in this case, it's just attribution. You must give appropriate credit. No additional restrictions. And you can, with the, this license, even in even states, even commercially. So this picture I found here, um, if I search for only CC BY license pictures, all these pictures, I can reuse, I can print out, and I can sell them even under the condition that I say this picture is taken, in this case, um, by photo Anna R. Right? So um, photo Anna R, we have a link here. This is the, she took this picture from the Eurovision Song Contest here in Karlstadt a couple of weeks ago. And we could now, she gave us the permission to print out this paper and a picture and sell it even. Right? You can use this picture in your blog post or whenever. Yeah, that would be nice for AI products, <laughs> yes. But this is a legal framework which you can only not use and for pictures, but also for music and um, uh, a lot of other context. So, so the licenses turn around this process. We know now uh, and can read about what we are allowed to do and what kind of permissions we got from the creator, from the author and copyright holder, right? And there's basically one, two, three, four, five, six different licenses. The most permissive license, the most which gives us as a reuser most freedom is this one, CC BY, with the one we talked about. Um, and this is basically, as I said, saying you can copy it, remix it, do whatever you want to, basically. Um, as long as you give credit to whoever did it and link back to the original author. And um, when you click on a picture like this, um, remember how I showed you on Pixabay how you could copy this text here. Here you get uh, not only the rich text uh, format, the copy text here, you copy all this stuff. You can also get uh, the HTML text for your blog if you wanted to or just the plain text if you um, uh, need to um, and there this, this the link to the to the license here is um, 
is printed out, so to speak, because this is what we need to do. This is the legal requirements and good practice, how to refer to a Creative Commons license work. Does that make sense so far? Or um... Yeah. Uh, so... I just have a, um, a question is, do we, we have to put all that full text or we can just sort of like provide, for example, a link if it's something that is digital or something. Yes. Um, so um, <clears throat> the best practice here, if we go back to this picture, here is the best practice how to do it. For instance, on a blog, right? So, and the abbreviation is, I put it in the chat, TASL, T-A-S-L. Title, author, mm -hmm. source, and uh, um, license is the structure. The title, the picture was called Melodie Festival in 2024, Dale Tevling 5, Karlstadt, Markus and Martinus, Unterfledagens Press Conference. This is the title of the picture, right? By Photo Anna R, which was the link to um, this user on Wikimedia, and the license. It's created under CC BY 4.0, and this is the same legal text which I showed you previously. This is always, this is the correct way to refer to Creative Commons license work. Thank but you. depending on if you use it on a blog or on your reflections, both on the internet, then you would link it to it. If you print it out, you would like to, you would like to others to be able to um, find this place, the original work, right? So if it's on a, if you print out the stuff, I cannot read the link. So I cannot find the license text. So this is why when you have it in plain text, you would like to provide the, write out the link. And this is why the difference is here. If you print out this picture, you would copy this text underneath it in a small caption so that others can find it. The link also best would be also to photo Anna R. Um, but there's um, Creative Commons license are, and the system is very per, um, permitting in a sense. If you do a mistake, you cannot get legal charges on you. If you do a mistake in, in referring to the original work, the copyright holder uh, is supposed to contact you and ask you to um, do it properly. And then you have two weeks to, fi to fix it. And then, um, you, then it's fixed. And there's no, no one can hold you, sue you for referring wrongly, right? The copyright holders only can say, look, thank you for reusing my work, but you didn't copyright properly, and uh, please do it. This is actually, as a little anecdote, exactly what happened to us with open network learning. Um, we did it wrongly in the, we refer to the original, to flexible distance online learning, and to this is the original course of ONL, wrongly. And Chrissy contacted us and said, look, uh, Jörg and Elash, actually, you're referring wrongly. Can you please fix it? We fixed it immediately. And no big deal about this. This is how it works in practice. And you see this here. Here we have the symbol for the logo. And here we, um, we refer to open network learning. This is our work. And then we write, it's a derivative of flexible distance online learning by Chrissy Nianzi and Lars Olin, licensed under CC by NC unless otherwise noted, right? Um, that's what you also can do. You can, if you have a PowerPoint presentation or your blog, you can write something like this on your blog in, your, in the a footer. But of course you can maybe use uh, other licenses on your blog, or you can have even, uh, you bought a picture or ask for um, not creatively commons, <laughs> creative commons license work on your reflection space by it but then you just write it in your uh, in the captions for that particular work all right going back to the other license so there are five more licenses so if you publish your work with a creative commons license you can restrict what others can do for instance you could say 
uh, I don't want you to use this in commercial uh, purposes, right? I don't want you to make money out of my work. Then you uh, see this dollar sign and I go to the link here. Um, this is pretty commonly used also. Then you are allowed to do, you're free to share, copy, redistribute the material in any medium or format as before adapt, remake, transform, build upon the material as you like under the following attribution uh, terms. Attribution, you always have to attribute. And in this case, non-commercial. You may not use the material for commercial purposes, right? Because the author told me so and all of us beforehand. Um, so to filter in here now and this work about Karlstadt, then I only have, then I find six, 658 works which have this license, CC by NC, non-commercial. These ones I can use on open network learning. This I can use in, in research pro, uh, uh, conferences, in teaching, in whatever context, but not if I do executive co um, education where we, where it's uh, uh, sold uh, as um, courses which we take money for. For instance, I cannot sell these pictures. I cannot use those pictures in my private company on my on the company homepage because this is a commercial context, right? Because the author said you can use this picture and do whatever you want to, but not in a commercial context. Clear? Yeah. Then uh, there's another uh, license uh, which um, is. Uh, what do you mean? CC by ND, no derivatives or adaptions permitted. We go to the license text. Oh, you mean housing? Yeah. I'll, uh, is it Yankin? Um, if you could mute yourself. Um, um, thank you. Um, so here, again, you uh, have, um, you can share here see that you cannot adapt because the licensor said here uh, or this license says you you can use it and reuse it you may can make copies and uh, distribute it in any medium or format you can print it out but you cannot make changes to the picture you have to use the picture in this case it's a picture as it is in all the other examples um in those ones here, right? Um, or uh, when we said we filtered uh, by CC BY, um, in these pictures here, we can we can uh, crop it, we can uh, make it black and white the color pictures, or we can color these pictures, or we can mix it with others pictures, right? But if we come across a license which is ND, these pictures here, hundred eleven of those eight thousand pictures were. Um, CC by ND no derivatives. These pictures, I can just send and reuse as them as they are. I cannot crop them. I cannot uh, put a nice drawing in here and publish them on my blog post. I can use them as they are and send them and mail them and print them as they are. Um, that's the restriction I get from the copyright owner. Make sense? Then, and there is another uh, license, um, and this is called share alike. This is most maybe the most complicated one to explain because it involves two steps. Again, we are we are told here on this license text what we are allowed to do. We can share, we can copy in any media material. Uh, medium or format that's always the same text adapt also we can do all kinds of funny things with those pictures but if we and this is under the following terms if we make a remix of this picture like if we use it with another picture and really transform the picture like a smoothie with other pictures then we have to if we publish our stuff our powerpoint presentation our our picture and if we publish that our work, we have to use the same license as the original picture we 
used in the first place. So then our work has to be published in a CC by SA with this license text. So if you publish your work with this license, you can force others to create more cr Creative Commons licensed work because otherwise they are not allowed to use them, if that makes sense. This is maybe the most complicated uh, one. And then, um, so just to see like um, there's folks out there who use this, these 2,487 pictures have the license CC by SA. If I take this picture and make something funny with it and transform it, maybe um, paint a picture in it or some slogan in here or make it black or white, and I publish this on my blog post or my reflection space, then my blog post has to be with a CC by SA 3.0 license. Right. So, and then the only other stuff is here, combinations of the above. So this one is NC share like, non-commercial share like. If we go to the text, uh, a lot of logos here, <clears throat> they stand always for the same stuff. So in this case, from those logos, you see immediately non-commercial. So if I have a private company, I cannot use this work on that page. And I, if I use this work in a non-commercial um, context, I need to, and if I remix it, then I need to publish my work also with the same license. And the other one is, uh, and we can just see if there's, people using this license. I'm sure they do. Yes, a lot of the Wikimedia stuff is um, licensed with this license. Um, so 2000 of the works here with this license. And then the last um, license, which we which fall under the Creative Commons license definition as such, is NC, non-commercial, non-derivatives. So another combination of non-commercial and non-derivative together in one license. And we can just see, is there stuff licensed with this work? No, no, oh, 2000 ones. So this is the Creative Commons license and um, they are used for pictures, for videos, for um, audio, for music, uh, yeah, audio music, but also in uh, open access uh, research publications. Then there's um, two more licenses. Um, and this is CC0 and the public domain mark. Uh, and this is little uh, special cases. And my, you can say that Pixabay and Unsplash, they use kind of the CC0 uh, license. Uh, this means uh, this has, work has been marked as dedicated to the public domain. This means that if you publish something, then you say, look, I, look, I don't want to have copyright anymore. I give it away for free or like uh, I, I sign off my copyright, right? Um, here's also a question again. Um, do you know, have you heard about public domain, what this means and how do works come into public domain? I guess after 70 years after the author's death, his work or her work re is in the public domain and then everybody has access to it, can use it, remix and modify uh, it, like Shakespeare's maybe work. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was pretty big in the news uh, in the beginning of the year that the original Walt Disney Mickey Mouse drawings, they came into the public domain because copyright law in the most in the years often is about um, um, is lasting for seventy years after the death of the copyright uh, holder or uh, creator, right? This is how long we have copyright. So if you create something now nicely, then seventy years after your death, you have and your. Um, your relatives um, have copyright on your work, right? But after the 70 years then, what happens then? Yeah, then 
things get into the public domain then it's uh, free to use for everyone then no one has copyright anymore on this work and this happens lately with the creative Commons uh, with the mickey mouse original drawing by walt disney uh, and by the way, that it is 70 years after the death has very much to do with Walt Disney because they're lobbying very much and it's a lot of money involved in copyright and ownership and intellectual property right. A lot of money to be made there. So um, this is why we have, uh, they have been, uh, those copyright holder organizations have been very actively um, promoting long copyright laws um, for creative works so that the companies can make more money and which is really yeah has a lot of effects what we can for creative work what other people can do with it anyway um so uh, and you see this also in in uh, so you could use then cc0 if you immediately want to say that you want to dedicate something in the public domain or libraries, galleries, they also um, sometimes use this one for just indicating and be precise for work. This is in the public domain. This is an old digitalization of an old picture and photograph from the 1800s. There, no one has copyright anymore. And then libraries or galleries use this to dedicate if they um, make uh, works, old works accessible to the broader public. And thank you, Mirna, for, um, it, I'm just reading the text because there's like, and it, this is actually fantastic because this is making even now the last case here now how we could use it not only for our individual reflection spaces, but for teaching resources, for open educational resources, open textbooks. And what we talked about last week and what this topic is about, openly sharing, open educational practices, open educational resources. If we now don't think of pictures, but think of research or study material, re, uh, study notes or PowerPoint presentations or a video or open textbooks and publish them with the Creative Commons licenses, which allow reuse and adapting like a CC uh, BY license or CC BY SA license. Then this is the definition of an open educational resources. And the link here, um, um, this is open textbooks. One, um, one place where you can find textbooks, for instance, in business here, which are, and here you see the license, in this case, CC BY and CSA, non-commercial, share alike. This, this textbook, which you can um, probably download also, you have online on SPDF, you and your students could build upon this one. This is probably, yeah, uh, this is coming from a US context if you want to use this uh, textbook, for instance, in your um, context with your students, what a fantastic opportunity to adapt this textbook for your context. Go through this stuff. And um, now it's, uh, it's especially the um, part on business applications, maybe the rest is pretty global here for calculus it's, and in Excel is not differencing so much in different countries, but business applications, examples, update this, recreate this for Serbian context, update this for Portuguese context, um, update this, just translate it to Brazil, uh, to Portuguese and make it accessible in Brazil and Portugal. Translate it to Spanish or uh, make this more culturally aware in Mandarin or Cantonese um, or other languages and make this more in line with our cultural uh, norms and conditions and examples which our students rely to. Fantastical, fantastic activity for students to adapt a textbook like this and publish this online and make this available with up-to-date examples. Now this is here very um, 
up to date as such this book, but you might find other works. And talking about finding other works, I just want to share this one, um, a meta search engine for OERs, um, RC, friends of us in, um, in um, and here you see a lot of open textbook library material here. Um, here you find, you can search Similar, I did with OpenVerse for pictures and audio. This is one for open educational resources. I just want to find stuff about engineering sciences. And I only want to find videos. Well, this is great, uh, but I also want to find stuff in uh, German. And then you probably, and then you find 4,900 videos, which you can reuse. You immediately see the license and can work with it, integrate it in your learning management system, um, adapt them, build upon this. If you don't want to have videos, but like maybe uh, drills and practices, then we still find 182 here in German and uh, even two in Swedish. Um, yes, so this is a little introduction to Creative Commons licenses. And now hopefully you find you never have to reuse and do illegal acts of copying and pasting um, pictures from the internet. And just by the way, if we go to Google and do the same here in Karlstadt search and go to picture search, this is now in, it's in, well, in German, but you get the drift. If you go to, um, oh, sorry, uh, into search filters, you even have a place here, uh, Nutzungsrechte, uh, copyrights, and you even find here, you can even filter in Google about Creative Commons licenses, but only if it's Creative Commons licenses or not not as nicely as an open verse where you can filter per licenses. But you probably never knew that uh, this is uh, there hidden in the filters in Google even, and um, very handy. Now you're in the know. Yes, Katarzyna. Yeah, I have a question because you you started the meeting saying that there is some kind of fair use in some countries and yeah. in Poland, we have like personal use. When I copy something for my personal use, I can always do it. When I don't share it with anybody, like a video, like a text. And there is educa fair educational use where, 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 where I share it with the students I know. Mm -hmm. My class, my group, not outside, not on the like a platform which is available to people I don't know. It's yeah. also allowed, it's also kind of legal. And maybe that's why teachers use a lot of um, like um, units from textbooks or photographs or diagrams because they believed it was okay. Sometimes, I mean, it's always fair and nice to provide the author and the source, even though it's like educational use. Um, some teachers did it, some teachers didn't do it. So my, maybe now it's time to clean, to clean it up. And I was wondering, I was sure this law, this educational fair use, it's like in the whole U European Union, isn't it? Um, copyright law is, uh, le uh, is national. This much I know. And I what is true in Poland might not be true in uh, Poland. Uh, Poland, uh, what is true in Poland is not uh, applicable in Sweden one-to-one. -one. It's similar for sure. But uh, in Sweden, we have other agreements with copyright holders. It's called the bonus of toll. Um, in US, you have a specific fair use. It's a term and legal document, a framework. And Serbia might have its own particularities. Portugal has its particularities. A good point of contact would, and Singapore has its own. Um, a good point of contact is always the library. If they cannot help you and know have the answers to this, uh, then you have probably lawyers at your universities as well. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, but it's a problem because the materials we are using are international and global like uh, yes. it's not always that i use the polish author uh, no. right exactly. and then this international uh, maybe author may believe i violated i violated the law yeah. in his or her country right yes 
and 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 this this can be very well uh, be the case that everything is fine or that you actually breach the law uh, but if we think about now from a different perspective if we want to contribute to a global knowledge corpus or body and reopen educational resources we as a group of community and now which knows about Creative Commons licenses and have an idea for a textbook maybe or want to reuse a textbook and adapt it, it's very easy. A legal and consistent framework internationally is just to use Creative Commons licenses and search for this material, publish your own work. Um, so then everyone, everything is fine. Copyright law can be very tricky, but Creative Commons licenses give us a pretty easy framework to to let other people know what you are allowed to do without even asking. And you can always ask if you want to reuse it. In other case, you can always contact the original copyright holder. But then this is the idea. On copyright allows for educational. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, uh, I'm, as I said initially also, I'm not a, a lawyer. I cannot give legal advice. Uh, it might be uh, different uh, stuff might be legal uh, uh, from the digital single market, but it, this one does not help any one of us in the community outside the EU either. If we want to cooperate and do something together, which is legally binding also for all of us, uh, then we might as well just use Creative Commons licenses and make it uh, explicable and inclusive for the entire world. Um, so it, it depends from, of course, this is a little bit more, little bit more uh, work at, to put something like a Creative Commons licenses on your blog post or on a PowerPoint presentation. But once you did this two, three times now and uh, your blog post, uh, your individual reflection spaces and, and it's a perfect opportunity to practice this a little bit. If you didn't did this a couple of times, copy and paste this from OpenVerse, for instance, you get the hang of it. And um, you can always, I'm very sure all your, uh, there is a librarian at your um, university library, which is on top of those things and can help you with this, uh, certainly at our library. Um, and you can ask in the ONL community because a lot of us are um, pretty um, experienced with the Creative Commons licenses. Not all of us, uh, but more and more. And this is the idea and the, the community aspect behind it that we become more. Um, and this is why it's part of the topic on openness and sharing because this gives us a legal binding framework uh, and, and a very pretty straightforward way. But it, yeah, to make something very complicated, less complicated and more usable. Thank you for uh, your comment, uh, Katarzyna and, and Katie for Googling it. Other reactions, comments or remarks, special cases? What you think is a stupid question, which is actually not because there are no stupid questions. So maybe I will say there may be some noise here in this room, but we we had our group meeting today uh, for uh, about edu open educational resources, mm -hmm. and we hmm, we somehow focused on artificial intelligence. Yeah, is it an open resource? Is it legal to use this? Which uh, way of using it? It's okay, I guess. Yeah. There is like a total mess and misunderstanding, and I'm looking forward for those guidelines when we click, get like clear cut answer, and we know this is fair, this is not fair for us, for our students. Yeah, yeah. the moment must come. Um, I have a uh, Wiley OER um, AI. Um, there's a um. And there's a person called David Wiley. He's very um, one of the founding fathers about the idea of um, um, the reuse of open educational resources. He has a blog post about AI and um, um, OERs and what is uh, available and uh, what is allowed and not. And um, the thing is, as I will look into this and share it in the community um, space, is that uh, works created by AI, like pictures from Copilot or DALI, uh, they are in the public domain. Only humans can have uh, copyright 
on stuff. AI uh, algorithms cannot. So if you create something with, uh, this is the, the third strategy, first Pixabay, Unsplash and those places. The second one is Openverse, Creative Commons license. The third area or way of finding and reusing pictures, create them by uh, with, um, uh, with the help of AI and generative AI tools, because uh, then those works are in the public domain. And what about text co-created with AI? <laughs> Not pictures co-created, but text yeah, co-created. Like and... anything, you, the thing is stuff, um, like this is at least American copyright and it's been tested in, in courts. Only humans can have copyright. So st stuff, text created by AI is in the public domain by default. Unless uh, there will be other lawsuits and cases in the future. But right now it's been established um in uh, in courts in the united states at least that it, this is the case there's other copyright issues regarding ai but this is more about um, all the copyright holders and what open ai and their um um suppliers did in creating and gathering every material and uh, when producing large language models they did copyright breaching because they didn't ask for permission. In this part, there's definitely lawsuits going on which are not resolved. But this um, is between, this is, for instance, between open AI and the suppliers and copyright holders, not for us as users creating stuff with the help of uh, ChatGPT or DALI or other stuff, other tools. Jörg, but I have a question. Like, yeah. if you use Copilot, because yeah. now he uses, he kind of actually gives you the sources. So you sort of like are writing prompts and challenging it and is giving you information, but he's yeah. also giving you the sources that he's using, which is pretty good in that sense. Yeah. Then it, that stuff is, uh, if I use it, I would have to cite it because he is using, um, you know, sources that is being is indicating right. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and that's totally fine now in the last minutes. Now we're drifting a little bit away from copyright questions and Creative Commons license to AI. And this is totally understandable because we're all dealing with it. Um, just as a rem reminder, start, even if Copilot shows you links to sources, it's good to remember that the text which is produced is generated in right. that moment and is not a copy and paste from those sources but you can find uh, information or similar text on those sources. And which is, by the way, I think a very handy and nice feature for Copilot in comparison to ChatGPT, for instance, I think. Uh, but um, yeah. Um, but and, and, uh, and the other remark I have on this is like, of course, and this is if you publish research also and what we have in our guidelines for our students, for instance, at our university, if students or we as researcher make use of AI, we should be transparent about it, right? And then we need to refer it that some parts or uh, of the text or the structure or where we got help from uh, AI in the publication process, um, we, we should be transparent about this. And um, then we need to refer to it also. And this is why a uh, APA and the uh, um, American Association for Psychology, is it this? The APA7 is, uh, for instance, they have guidelines, All the probably all the others has also guidelines. If you go to Nature, they have guidelines. The top 100 uh, research outlets, I think, uh, journals have, 80% uh, of them have uh, guidelines for AI use and referring. Uh, so because it's, yeah, we, we want in research, we want transparency, right? Um, so we need to refer it. Any final question, remark, comments? If not, then thank you so much for attending all your questions and active participation in this one hour workshop. Uh, and have fun uh, in your PBL group works. And I'm looking forward to reading your individual reflections on the topic. Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy. Thank you. Thank you.